What's up guys? So, I finally finished it. I present the PS Pi Zero version 5. I'm gonna start by showing all the features in action and then toward the end of the video, I'll show the actual board. Let's start with power. Like the previous board, it's got a soft on off feature where a quick press of the power button will turn the board on. Once you turn it on, it'll give you two blinks on the power LED just to let you know that the microcontroller is working. And that microcontroller handles all the input for the buttons, joystick, brightness, battery, and sends it all to the Raspberry Pi. For charging, you have two options. You can charge using the mini USB port on the top, or you can charge using the normal PSP round connector. Either option will give you up to one amp of charging. There are two different charge indicators. When you plug it in, you'll see the power LED change from green to orange. Also, you'll see the battery icon on the LCD change to show that it's detecting a charge. The power LED also doubles as a low battery warning. It'll turn orange when the battery is low and the board's close to shutting off. To power it off, you can either go through the menus and do a normal shutdown, or you can just press the power button up quickly in the same manner you did to power it on originally. Either option will perform a normal shutdown and then the board will power off. There's one last power feature, and that's the ability to force the power off if the system locks up for some reason. You just hold the power button up for three or four seconds, and that'll kill power without the normal shutdown process. All right, let's move on to the display. In the last board I made, I used a 480 by 272 resolution screen, which matched the resolution of the original PSP. That's all that was available at the time, but there's now an 800 by 480 resolution one. Uh, both LCDs will work just fine with this board, but the new one gives a much better image. As for audio, it's now stereo. It's still PWM, but as you can probably hear, it sounds much better than the last board. The volume plus and minus buttons are wired directly to the new amplifier, so you can increase and decrease volume regardless of what program you're running. The mute button will completely mute the speakers, and the switch on the left will mute both the speakers and the headphones. Also, plugging headphones into the headphone jack will mute the speakers. All right, on to the controls. So every button functions on this. The left and right triggers, D-pad, the four action buttons, joystick, start and select, they all work as you'd expect. The mute button mutes the speakers. The display button will cycle through all the LCD brightness levels. Once you're in a game, the home button will exit back to emulation station. The new driver I made for the controls should work in just about every program out there as long as that program works with things like USB controllers. I've tested it with Kodi and it works just fine playing Twitch. I made a few custom scripts for the board. If you navigate to the PS Pi system, you'll see restart in game mode, restart in normal mode, and update the PS Pi software from the boot folder. So restarting in game mode will disable a bunch of networking stuff, which shaves 10 to 20 seconds off the boot time and also helps with game performance a little bit. Sometimes you'll get hitches when there's Wi-Fi activity and this prevents it. Restarting in normal mode will revert everything back to normal and re-enable all the networking stuff. For a comparison on normal and game mode, I've got both options running in parallel here to show the boot times. I started them both at the same moment, so you can see where game mode will get you to a usable system much faster. Doing the update option will reinstall or update the PS Pi software. So if I was to come out with a driver update, you can copy it to the boot folder and then run this script to install it. And here's the board. Sitting next to the old version four board, there's a lot of similarities as far as the shape and position of the Raspberry Pi and SD connector, but you'll also see that things are a lot more refined and the board no longer requires any case modification on the PSP shell meaning the process is completely reversible if you want to take your PSP back to stock again. The board also has a female header for the Raspberry Pi, so the installation of the Raspberry Pi isn't even permanent. This was probably the largest source of headaches in the last board because Raspberry Pis do occasionally die, and it's no easy task removing one that's soldered to a board. The headphone board attaches using the 6-pin JST cable, and you don't have to solder that either. 
it's male on both ends, so you just plug it in. And the last big change as far as assembly goes is that you no longer have to solder wires to the PSP speakers. I was able to find the connectors that match the speaker cables, so you can just plug the original speakers right in. Alright, so that about covers it for this guys. My main focus on this was power efficiency, so you should get somewhere between 3 and 8 hours of playtime per charge, depending on how bright the screen is and what game you're playing. The Compute Module 4 board is still in the works, and that one's going to focus on processing power over efficiency. So I'm putting the first batch of these boards on my site shortly after this video goes up. I expect the first batch to sell out pretty quickly, and I'll have another one right behind it, so no worries, you should be able to get one pretty quickly if you want one. The initial price is going to be about 100 bucks, and I'll cover the worldwide shipping costs. Um, all the files are open source, I've got links down in the description if you want to make one of these yourself from scratch. Or if you just want to use the circuits or code for your own projects, feel free to. If you like what I do and you want to help support my work, you can make a purchase on my site or visit one of the donation links in the description to make a one-time or a recurring contribution. I'm working on more stuff, so subscribe here and also follow me on Minds and Locals if you want more frequent updates. Thanks for watching, guys.